OK, so solving an equation that just has x's in it, even in the denominator, not too bad. You have to sort of work it through, get all the x's to bubble up onto the top, and then work around, get all the x's together, and so forth. Great. But what if you make the equation that you're given a lot more exotic? In fact, what if, in fact, there are powers on the x's? So now I want to talk to you about the fact that it really is hip to be square. In particular, I want us to think about quadratic type equations. Now, a quadratic equation has sounds sort of intimidating. Quadratic, and starts with a QU, and it sounds really great. But really, all it means is that there are x's now that, instead of just appearing naked, actually now have a power of 2 on them. So let's take a look at a very simple example. How about x squared, you see there's the power of 2, equals 25. OK, if x, e if x squared equals 25, what I now want to do is figure out what's the right value for x to make these two things equal. Well, you may look at this and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's just 5. Well, if you plug in and check, you'll see you're absolutely right. 5 squared is, in fact, 25. So it looks like we're done. Uh, but actually, that's not the only solution. Because what happens if, for x, I put in minus 5? Well, if I take minus 5 and square it, that's minus 5 times minus 5, I'd still get 25 because those negative signs would drop out. So in fact, now we see there are two answers. Maybe there are three answers that we just don't even know what the third one is yet. So when you have powers in the variables, you actually may get more than one answer. Now how can we see that for sure, and how can we make sure that in fact, we found all the answers, namely plus 5 and minus 5. And there's not like a third answer, you know, sort of a third gunman somewhere else hidden somewhere that we can find later. Well, here's a great way to solve all quadratic type problems. And that is to create something that equals 0. In particular, bring everything over to one side and then have on the other side just a lone 0. Now, how would I do that here? Well, here, I would just take this 25. I'd want to move it to the other side. So I'd subtract it. And so I'd see x squared minus 25 equals 0. Great. OK, now what would I do with this? Well, you see, instead of trying to solve it or take square roots or do things like that, what I'm going to do is factor. And this is the key thing for you to remember. Factor. And let me show you why this is going to be a good idea. You see, there are people that might say, you know what? I know this stuff. I remember it. I saw it before. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take square roots of both sides, and I'm just going to say the following. I'm just going to say x equals 5 and be done with it. The problem is that is not quite right. But this is a very, very common mistake. In fact, this is number two on my top 10 list of classic, classic mistakes. It's right there. You see it? Bing! Number two. It's the quadratic mistake. The thing to remember is, when you have an exponent of 2, it means there may, in fact, be two answers. So just taking square roots of both sides ain't going to cut it anymore. Okay? And what you've got to do is make sure you're going to capture all the solutions. So instead of the square root business, which, you know, it only works for these kind of problems if it even works then. Instead, let's use the factor method. So the factor method is to make sure that you just have 0 on the right and everything else over on the left. And then look at what you've got there and try to factor. Okay? And if you need help factoring or want to refresh your course in factoring, just click one of those buttons down there, and you can just see all the factoring you want, more factoring than you ever thought humanly possible. I ought to know, because I factored those things down there. Anyway, uh, this I see is the difference of two perfect squares. And so I know how to factor that. It would just be x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 5. And I still have that equal to 0. And now here is the key fundamental fact about mathematics that's going to save us. It's going to rescue us out of this dilemma. If I have two numbers, and if their product is 0, the only way that can happen is if either the first number were to be 0 or the second number were to be 0. I can't take two numbers, neither of which is 0, and multiply them together and produce 0. Try it. 2 and 7 doesn't work. How about 4 and minus 3? doesn't work. You can't do it. So if I have a product of two things that equals 0, either this is 0 or that's 0, and that's it. Well, if this is 0, I could write that down, x plus 5 equals 0. That would lead me, lead me to the solution x equals minus 5. 
On the other hand, so or, maybe x minus 5 equals 0. In that case, I would see that x would have to be 5. And now, you see, I'm able to find not only both solutions, but discover that's all there is. Because, well, I factored and saw these are the only possible ways to make this thing 0. And you can go back and check and see 5 squared is 25 minus 5 squared is 25. So when you've got squares involved, the trick always is shift everything over, have a 0 on one side, and factor the other. OK, let's try a more exotic example. Suppose I give you 3x squared minus 7x, and that equals 0. Well, now we're in great shape because, in fact, they handed this to us on a silver platter, right? I already have the 0 there. Now my job is to factor. What technique would I use here? Well, I look at this and I say, gee, there's a common factor of x. Let me just factor out that common factor of x and see what we're left with. If I factor that out, so there's the common x, I'd have to have a 3x here. That's the remaining stuff after I factor out an x. And here, if I take away that x, I just have the minus 7. And so I factored it as x times 3x minus 7. OK, so now I've got a product of two things that actually come together to make 0. The only way that can happen is if either this thing is 0 or that thing is 0. Well, that means that either x equals 0 or, what's the other possibility, this thing equals 0. So 3x minus 7 equals 0. And now I'm going to go off and solve this little linear equation. I would bring this set, minus 7 to the other side. It becomes a plus 7, or add 7 to both sides, if you will. And I see 3x equals 7. And now I divide both sides by 3. And if I divide both sides by 3, the 3 is now here cancel. And I see x would equal 7 over 3. And so I see two solutions. x equals 0 is a solution. You can try that really easily and see. Plug in 0 here, and you see 0 minus 0 is 0. But also, 7 thirds is a solution. And you can actually check that by plugging in 7 thirds here and squaring it, and getting 49 over 9 times 3, and seeing what you get when you take minus 7 times 7 over 3. Look what happens. I would see 3 times 49 over 9, and I subtract off 7 times 7 over 3. Look what happens. The 3 and the 9 have a little bit of cancellation together. It produces a 3 downstairs, so I have a 49 over 3. But then minus 7 times 7 is 49 over 3. Something minus itself, 0. Checks. Cha-ching. And that's it. OK, let's try maybe. In fact, let me give you a chance to do one of these. I think that you're having, I'm having too much fun here. So I'm going to give you one and see if you can solve it. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. OK, see if you can find out what values of x would satisfy this equation. Try right now. <laughs> 